All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Allie. I'm part of our education team here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, and welcome to our Aquarium Online Academy. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We are going to have some fun because we, oh, my mic fell off just a little bit here. We are going to have some fun and we are going to play a little bit of I Fun. All righty, now we do have some opportunities for you to as well. So, the number is right below me here. It is 562-286-1838. And my friend Sarah is on our computer. So all of you if you have a question or you have an observation you would like to share with us, please do something with us here. And my friend Alicia is actually right behind the screen here, controlling all these awesome things that have Now, let's start with our first and see if we can find any animals. Alrighty, so go ahead and make some observations. What do you see? Let's look for some colors. Let's look for some shapes. Do you buy anything? I buy some penguins. Was that what you were saying, penguins? Yes, exactly. This is absolutely why. Right now here at the Queen of the Pacific, this is our penguin webcam. So you can see a couple of our penguins are up on the shore here. A couple of them wiggling around. They wiggle their tail feathers. It's pretty silly, you can see there. But a couple of them are also in with the bottom of the of the ocean whereas if you're looking up that belly blends in with the sunlight coming in from above so it's a really cool form of camouflage i gotta uh, think my mic is just a little muffled so i hope that that uh, just adjustment helped a little bit there Alrighty, i think we're ready to move on to our next animal oh look at all these penguins here that's a lot of penguins <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next animal here. All right, take a moment and see what you can spy. Go ahead and make some observations. I spy some, were you about to say it? Seahorses. Do you see these seahorses right down here? These seahorses are camouflaged really well with their surroundings. So let's see how many seahorses we see down here. I see one behind here, two, 
three, four. Oh, look, one just poked up in the back over here. So there's several seahorses in here. They come out of almost looks like nowhere because they're so good at blending in. Now let's take a minute and think, well, why would an animal want to blend in? Hmm, how could that be helpful for them? Hmm, yeah, if they want to hide. Now, why would they want to hide? Maybe they're hiding from something that might want to eat them. Or maybe they're hiding from what they're trying to sneak up on. Oh, you can see a couple of our seahorses hiding in this brush you see here. They have great big strong tails that they use to wrap around all of those uh, corals and also all of that kelp that you might see in different habitats. And they can hold on to those tails and kind of mimic or pretend to be all of those, all of those different plants that live in the ocean. They have a really, really strong tail. And oh, here's another, another nice, nice picture of our seahorse here. In addition to their tail, another really cool adaptation that seahorses have is they have a really long snout. Does everyone see that snout on the very tip of our seahorse's head right here? Yeah, it's very, very cute. It's almost like a big straw or a big tube in the very front of their face where their nose would be. And this actually helps them to eat tiny, tiny little critters. They can eat tiny plankton that you almost can't see. Oh, here's a really good video of our seahorses moving around. And they have those nice long snouts that help them to kind of slurp up their food just like a little straw. Now, of course, they're pretty tiny, so they have tiny, tiny little mouths and they have tiny little pieces of food. You might also notice in this video here, do you see any fins? I spy some fins here. Yeah, those fins are moving, helping them to move along through the water column. So great observations there. You spied a lot of really cool animals. Now we're going to look at, oh my goodness, Miss Alicia put up one of my favorite animals in the world. And I want you to take a look at this. What do you spy in this picture? Yeah, I spy. Almost looks like a seahorse. But it, does it look a little different? Yeah, this is called a sea dragon. I know, believe it or not, this is a sea dragon. This is called a weedy sea dragon. So this is a really cool one that we have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and they are a cousin of a seahorse. So you can see they have some similarities. What similarities do you spy between a seahorse and a sea dragon? What do you see? Yeah, I spy a nice long snout, I spy a nice long tail, but they have all of these appendages all over their bodies. That is another way that these animals can blend in with their environment. It kind of looks like a seaweed or an algae or a plant, doesn't it? Yeah, and so if a predator was swimming through the water and they saw this, they might not want to eat it because they think, Hey, maybe that's just a plant. Good job. Alrighty, let's go to another animal that we can see. If we can find anything in this video. All right, I spy, were you about to say it? Clownfish? Yes, lots of clownfish. There are several clownfish in this video. Oh, and while we're looking at this video, we have a few questions coming on in. So, oh, Winter and Sierra are asking, what is the orange and purple fish in the seahorse video? You know, I'm not quite sure. Maybe we can bring that video back on up and hopefully one of my friends, uh, we might know which, um, which animal this is. Is it this one down here? I think this is, is this some sort of, is this an antheus or some sort of wrasse? 
I think it's a type of wrasse. I think that's the conclusion we're coming to here. And, and wrasse is a, is a big grouping of fish. Uh, so very colorful. So that's a really great observation that you saw that really colorful fish. Some fish are really, really bright and some, like we've been talking about, like to blend in. So that's a really great observation that you had, Winter and Sierra. Susie, how fast can a seahorse move? Susie, they are some of the slowest fish in the ocean. Uh, some of them can't move more than maybe a few inches per hour. They're very, very slow, depending on the species, because some seahorses can be pretty big, whereas some seahorses don't get much bigger than about this. So great question. They are, oh, here's a perfect example of one of our tiny, tiny seahorses that's just about the tip of my finger here in size. They move very, very slow. So they're one of the slowest fish in the ocean. Great question, Susie. And Jagger, why do sea dragons have long noses? Jagger, thank you so much for asking that. So we noticed that they have similarities between sea dragons and sea horses. Now, do you remember what we talked about when we uh, talked about that long snout, the seahorse? What did they use that long snout to catch? Yeah, they used it to get tiny little pieces of plankton. So these sea dragons eat pretty much the same thing. They eat tiny, tiny, little, tiny critters. And they can stick that long snout out and use that to get lots of tiny little critters. And even if tiny little plankton were hanging out, maybe inside of a rock or something like that, they could put that little snout right on in and get some food. Now, this is another type of sea dragon. Now, this is a really cool one. This is called the leafy sea dragon. What do you notice about the leafy sea dragon? Yeah, I see a lot more appendages or a lot more things coming off of the body. Do you see a lot more things kind of coming off of the body? Almost looks like, like, a, like a plant. Yeah, exactly. This is another kind of sea dragon. It has all of these nice big things coming out of it so it can blend in with its environment. Exactly. And do you notice it has that long snout as well? Oh, we're going to move on to our clownfish here. Okay, Mark, clownfish are definitely moving. I know clownfish are some of people's favorite fish. Now, what do you notice about our clownfish here? What sticks out to you? Yeah, what sticks out to me are their stripes. Do you see their stripes? I see kind of a big white one down the middle with two little black ones on either side. And these fish are kind of a football shape with a nice big tail. Do you see that? Now their tails are white. Some clownfish have orange tails. It just depends on the kind of clownfish. Here's another kind of clownfish you might be very familiar with as well. And they have those nice stripes and, of course, that nice orange tail. Now, I spy clownfish in this picture, but that's not the only thing I spy. Do you spy another animal? Go ahead and take a look. Oh, well, we had a, someone text on in, Winter sees what I'm seeing. Winter spies a sea anemone. Can everyone say that together? Sea anemone. It's a kind of a tricky word, but it's an animal hiding in this picture. Does everyone see these long, almost tubes? There you go. Perfect. These long tentacles. That is a sea anemone, this large animal right here. Now this sea anemone uses its tentacles and sticks them out into the water to grab on to tiny little pieces of food or little fish. It can bring them in to the center and I see a nice big hole. Do you spy that hole in the middle? Any idea what that hole could be? If they're bringing food on into it, that's right, just like us, that is their mouth. 
they're bringing food on into their mouth. So their mouth is right in the center here and they can eat tiny little plankton and fish, as I mentioned. And these sea anemones, they live on the ocean floor or on rocks and they stick to the bottom. They don't really swim around to fish, but they make excellent homes for fish, just like these anemone fish you see here, like those clownfish. Now I spy a fish inside of these tentacles. Now what is going on is this fish is using this animal, this sea anemone, as a home. So this sea anemone, all of those tentacles can sting, kind of like a jelly, kind of like a sea jelly. And if they can sting, most animals don't want to touch it. But anemone fish, like these clownfish, actually have a slime all over their body to protect them from that sting. So what that means is they can swim in and out of the sea anemone without being hurt and it protects them from other animals. Isn't that cool? You can see this anemone fish just kind of hiding right in there, right in there with that sea anemone. Great job doing I spy. I think we're ready to move on to another animal. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna give you a moment here. There's a lot going on in this picture. Let's see, what do you spy in this picture? I spy a lot going on. You might have said, hey, that looks a little similar to a sea anemone that we just talked about. You are right. There are lots of sea anemones in here. I see, uh, let's see, one right here. This one's all closed up. Do you see it kind of looks like a ball? Yeah, it has all of its tentacles kind of inside. So maybe it, it felt scared, but also maybe it is eating. Or, or this one up here that all of its tentacles are nice on out. While you're looking at this video here, Clara, how far can a seahorse see? Great question, Clara. Uh, they actually have great eyesight. Oh, here's a wonderful picture of our seahorse here. They can move each eye independently of each other. So I kind of think of it, um, maybe you've seen a chameleon before, how they can kind of move their eyes independent of each other. Pretty great that they can look out to see what's around them to either avoid things eating them or of course, uh, to find their food. Great question. And Sierra, oh, I love this question. Where is the anemone's heart and eyes? Great question, Sierra. I noticed that I didn't really see them either. So on our fish you see here, you can see their eyes pretty well, right? Do you spy their eyes on either side? And their heart is inside. But this anemone here, I don't really see any eyes, do you? No, they don't have eyes like us. So some animals are what we call simple animals and they don't have eyes. And guess what? They don't have a heart inside either. They don't even have blood. I know, pretty cool, isn't it? So they actually are very simple compared to us. They have other ways of uh, rotating things around their body. They have other ways of finding their food. Uh, one of those, which being those nice long tentacles coming on out. So great question. Not all animals have the same adaptations. Now, another animal that I spy in this picture here, besides our sea anemones, does anyone know which one I'm talking about? Oh, well, here's a, a green line coming right across. That's a wonderful fish as well. But it's not quite which one I'm talking about. Oh, another view here, perfect. I see a nice big orange one. Does anyone know what this is called? That's right, a sea star. Or you might have said starfish. Totally right too. Uh, we like to call it a sea star because starfish is a little confusing. Because guess what? 
they're not fish. <laughs> you can see uh, they don't have some of those adaptations that we were talking about just a few moments ago. They don't have those eyes or those fins that we saw on our fish or even those gills to help them breathe. Now you might notice our sea stars here. We can't really find their eyes on them. However, they are able to see light and dark. So I kind of think of it like if I was standing out in the sun and I closed my eyes, I can still tell it's light out. Whereas if I was in the room and I shut off the light and I closed my eyes, I can tell it's a lot darker. That's kind of how I think of sea stars as seeing. So this is another really great animal that you might spy in a coral reef habitat or in a tide pool habitat. Now, if we were to take a seahorse or a seahorse, a sea star, and flip it on over to look at its underside. My friend Alicia put up a really cool picture here. This is underneath the sea star. What do you notice about underneath the sea star? What's the same? What's different? Yeah, I see a, a, some lines coming out from the middle. Do you guys see that? Yeah, and all these little dots all over. Now those little dots you see there, if we were to look really closely, they would look like little suction cups, little tiny tubes with little sticky things on the end. Now, what do you think they might be able to use those for? That's right, for moving around. Also, maybe to, um, maybe to catch their food going across the sand, maybe opening up some shells. Yeah, that's a great observation. Now, while we're making more observations, our friend Sierra texted in, do anemones have feelings? Uh, Sarah, or Sierra, that's a, a little difficult to, to answer because we can't ask the sea anemone but they don't have a brain or anything like we do. So they're a lot more simple animals. So it's a really difficult question uh, to answer. Uh, they definitely react to different things, different foods, different touches, different animals. Uh, but do they have feelings like we do? It's a little tricky of a question because we can't ask them. <laughs> so I love that you're thinking, hey, how are they similar to us? Uh, that's really great great way that you are thinking about. <laughs> we'll go back to our other picture here of our, our, sea, our sea star. There we go. Perfect. Just a moment ago. So underneath that sea star, you'll notice all those little tube feet that we were talking about. Now all those tube feet help this animal to move, to eat, but also to stick on to things. Now why in the world would you think they would want to be able to stick on to something, not just fall off really easily. Hmm, that's right. What if something came on and wanted to eat them? They could say, uh-uh, and stick on to that rock there and try their hardest to stick on. Or what if a really big wave came in and went and that sea star was like, I don't want to go for a ride right now. I want to stay home. So it's sticking on to that rock. It's a really great adaptation that this animal has. Now, it has a tummy as well. However, its stomach is right in the middle. So all of these lines pointing right to this little area here, that's where their stomach is. It's on the bottom of the sea star. What they do is walk around and they can expose their stomach, which means they can take their stomach out of their body kind of silly, but they do that so they can eat and then bring it back in again. It's actually a really cool way that this animal eats. They bring their stomach out of their body. They, oh, my friend Alicia found a picture. Okay, this here, see that kind of gooey yellow stuff? That's their stomach. <laughs> they can put their stomach out of their body, whoop, eat, and then they can bring their stomach back in. Isn't that cool? Imagine if we did that, that would be a little strange. But sea stars, believe it or not, they do that. Oh, Amelia says, 
Do sea stars have teeth? Great question, Amelia. They don't really have teeth like we do. So they more have this stomach and that can break things down inside of it, but they don't chew their food. Uh, however, some other animals do have modified teeth. Uh, there's another animal that lives in the reef that's really closely related to this. And it kind of looks like a spiny little ball. And it is called a sea urchin. Now see if you can find a sea urchin. What looks like a spiny little pokey ball? See if you can find anything. Oh, I see a few. So I see actually one hiding right here. I know it's kind of to the side. Do you see that kind of purple spiky ball? There's one down here as well. Now that is a sea urchin. Now those are cousins of a sea star and they have tiny little teeth. Again, they're on the bottom. So if we were to flip this boop, and look right in the middle, we would find tiny, tiny little teeth in a circle. And that helps them to eat their favorite food. Any idea what their favorite food is? It's sitting on it right now. What do you spy underneath that sea urchin here? Kelp! Seaweed! Yes, exactly. They love to eat seaweed. Now, it's not exactly the same kind of seaweed you and I might eat, uh, but it's this kelp that grows in the ocean. And if we looked really closely into the middle of the sea, um, the sea urchin's mouth here, that's the center here, they have five little teeth in the middle. And those little teeth help them to go munch, 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 and break down all of that nice kelp, all of that nice seaweed. Oh, so great observations there. Okay, I think we have one, time for one more animal. I think we have time for spying one more. So uh, let's put up another picture and let's see what we can find in this picture. Do you spy anything moving? Oh, yes. Oh, there. Just came on up. I spy tiny little fish. Do you see the tiny little fish? So there's one that went kind of back there right now. But there's one right here and one, whoop, right here. Do you see those fish? Now, they're very cute, I know, but even their name is cute. They are called a lump sucker. Isn't that hilarious? They are the lump sucker. They are cute little fish that kind of stick onto things. And they are very still most of the time. So sometimes you might not even see them. But if you look closely, they are definitely looking around. Here is a lump sucker stuck onto some kelp. Do you see its eyes moving? Maybe it's playing I spy with its friends. Who knows? You can see it kind of moving around and if we spy really really hard we can see this lump sucker but there are others back here too so they're all kind of hiding all over the place and there are really awesome fish that lives in pretty chilly water oh here's another really great picture now they have a mouth right here and sometimes you can see that mouth moving and these fish are only about this big. So do you think they eat really big things or a little bit smaller? Probably a little bit smaller, right? Because they're pretty small themselves. So they can eat small pieces of food in the water, but they spend a lot of their time resting on the bottom. You guys did a really great job here today exploring and playing I Spy with a variety of animals that we here at the aquarium like this adorable little lump sucker here <laughs> just the cutest little fish uh, i encourage you to keep playing i spy and see what other shapes and colors and observations you can make throughout the rest of your day but thank you so much for joining us here for our aquarium online academy from the aquarium of the pacific here in long beach have a wonderful day and hopefully we'll see you again